week, we'll be covering one of my favorite topics and one that many of you are interested in learning more about, and that is video. Video is a very complex topic because it involves a lot of components to make it successful. For this lecture, we will be covering the basics of video quality, codecs, and file formats. We will also review the basics of shooting, editing, and rendering digital video. In the final parts of this lecture, we will go over the correct guidelines for using video. All right, as they say in the video world, action. Video is composed of a series of rapidly displayed still images to give the perception of movement. Each image captures the instance of motion and creates persistence of vision where images form on the retina of the human eye and remain for a short period of time. Thus, as the image moves, the human eye stitches them together to form the video. In the past, this was achieved via film strips and a projector. For example, one of the first original movies of a horse running. Or this example of how a CRT displays moving images. Digital video uses binary code to produce videos and play them back. Because of the amount of still pictures needed at a high resolution, digital video does have some challenges with file size and processing. For example, your textbook states that 30 megabytes of data is needed for every second of uncompressed digital video. With my video expertise, I predict that with HD video at a high resolution, you're looking at more like 60 megabytes of data for every second of uncompressed video. Remember that this is uncompressed video. New compression standards and codecs have revolutionized digital video editing and delivery that we will discuss further on in this lecture. Good hardware performance is also very important. Past distribution methods included DVD players, and this new technology led to the new Blu-ray players, but the preferred new delivery method is via a high-speed network bandwidth. You see this type of digital video content delivered via the new streaming services such as Netflix and Hulu. Digital video quality relies on three factors. They are screen resolution, frame rate, and compression methods. Screen resolution determines the number of horizontal and vertical pixels used to present the video image. This determines how large the video will appear to the user. Output resolution is used to match the capabilities of the output medium. New computer displays, smartphones, and TVs now have a very high output resolution. Some even have a 4K resolution that is four times the quality of HD video. So when your book states decreasing these will help with the processing of digital video for output, this is not an option anymore. You will now have to deliver video at a very high output resolution in the new digital media climate. Frame rate measures the number of individual video frames displayed per second. This is also known as FPS or frames per second, and broadcast is usually 30 frames per second, while films are usually delivered at 24 frames per second, or 24 FPS. It is important to note that frame rates can be below 30 FPS and still not cause abrupt changes in video or jerky motion. You can even go down to 15 FPS and still have a video that is viewable. This was the standard frame rate for web delivery in the past. Your book has some outdated information on video delivery over the web. With modern bandwidth and delivery methods, you can now deliver a video online in a high screen resolution and at a high frame rate. This is all made possible by advances in the next topic that we will discuss. Remember that all video delivery formats incorporate some form of compression. A codec is defined as the compression method and algorithm or set of algorithms used to compress and then decompress the digital video. This is very important to know because there are many codecs available for video compression and each one has a different application and delivery. There are three strategies for compressing video and they are intraframe, interframe, and variable bitrate or VBR. Intraframe compression re-encodes the information in a single frame of video. This is where each frame is encoding separately into a format such as a JPEG and then linked together to produce a video. Interframe compression eliminates redundant content between frames, saving only the changes between the frames. This can reduce file size and still keep quality depending on what is being recorded. MPEG is a popular format and widely used video codec that stands for Motion Picture Experts Group. 
This uses different types of frames to achieve proper compression. I frames, P frames, and B frames where each one is used based on the changes in the frames. Please review these in more detail via your textbook. MPEG is one of the best choices for distributing video. The new standard is MP4. The last compression strategy that we will review is variable bitrate encoding. This includes two approaches. Constant bitrate, CBR, where it assigns the same number of bits per second to all parts of the video, or variable bitrate, where it assigns more bits to the complex scenes and fewer bits to simpler scenes. Here are the common video codecs that are available. Please review this in detail in your textbook. The most popular ones are MPEG-4 or MP4 and QuickTime. Now let's discuss how to produce original digital video. It all comes down to three steps, shooting, editing, and rendering. In step one, you shoot the needed video. This step requires planning and many times a script has been created and the intended use of the video is defined by this. Also, the list of shots is generated based on the script of the project. Next, you have to consider weather, lighting conditions, availability of personnel, that's your team, your talent, and finally, you have to think of how the video will be integrated into your project workflow. There are two approaches to shooting video. One is shooting to record, where you capture a video, such as an event, that is shared out immediately. In this type of shooting, it attempts to capture the ultimate form of the video as the shooting is done. You see this type of shooting in live TV or streaming events and concerts. Shooting to edit is where you follow a pre-planned script and shoot your video knowing that you're gonna edit it. When you shoot to edit, you're shooting many video clips that you will work with in the editor after and blend them to create a single message. Anytime that you shoot video, you will need a camera to do so. Selecting the right camera involves knowing the CCD, lenses, microphones, light sensitivity, storage media, and file format of the camera. CCD stands for charge coupled device and the larger the CCD, the better the camera. Because the CCD converts voltages of RGB light into digital values, it is the most important part of capturing quality digital video. It is important to note that the range of the colors available in a video is called the color gamut. Good video-specific cameras have multiple CCDs to capture different color spectrums. DSLRs and large format cameras have one large CMOS sensor that has a very high resolution and captures images similar to the film cameras of the past. As a matter of fact, the CMOS sensor on these cameras are about the size of a film cell. A lens is also an important consideration when selecting a digital video camera. Avoid ones that have digital zooms or software zoom. Here again is where a video cable DSLR camera has an advantage for shooting quality digital video. Because these are professional cameras, we have a lot of options on lenses and can easily change out the lenses depending on the shooting situation. Light sensitivity is another consideration. For standard video cameras, this is measured in lux. The lower the lux rating, the lower light conditions the camera can shoot. On DSLR cameras, this is measured in ISO that stands for International Standard Organization that measures the sensitivity to light. The higher the ISO rating, the lower lights the camera can shoot in. This does cause graininess on the video, but with high ISO settings, I have shot videos at night that look great. The next thing that you need when shooting video is a good microphone. As I stated in the module on sound, this is very important. Video cameras have built-in mics and inputs for other types of mics such as an omnidirectional mic that is optimized for a broad range of background sound or a unidirectional mic that can record a narrowly defined location. The use and placement of the mic is very important and depending on the application, you can place it on or near the subject to capture the needed sound. Remember that a video camera will sync the video and the audio, so it is important to monitor the sound with a good set of headphones to make sure that the sound is being recorded well. Next, you have to think of the storage media needed to capture your video. I've gone ahead and put a big red X on the use of tapes. In the past three years, tape technology has been completely phased out and everything is either stored on optical media or even better, solid state media. Remember that the source of the video footage should be captured at the highest resolution possible and not be highly compressed. DV or digital video formats are good for some broadcast applications. The new digital environment relies on new HD and even 3D formats to capture high quality videos. 
Now let's review some video shooting basics. The first is the rule of thirds and one of the best framing techniques that you will learn. What you do is mentally divide the camera image into thirds, both vertically and horizontal by inserting two equally spaced lines on both direction. Here's an example of what it looks like. And many new cameras have a grid built into the display that allows you to turn this on when needed. The subject that you're shooting is then aligned on the intersection of these lines. When you do this, it creates a much more interesting shot. I've included a link to a video that can help you understand how this is done. Please watch it because the rule of thirds is one of the most important shooting techniques that you can learn. It's important to minimize camera motion and know how to control the camera moves. For example, a pan moves the camera side to side. A tilt moves the camera up and down. And a zoom increases the focal length, making subjects appear closer to the camera. Time code is also an important concept to know, especially when it comes to editing video. The format on the video time code is displayed in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. This was a big concept in the past, but it has become less significant on the optical and solid state recording formats. You will encounter it in the video editing software, so remember the format and how to read it. Here are some shooting basics to consider. Please review these in detail, and remember as the videographer, it is your job to help tell the story using visuals. The script will tell you the story along with the visuals needed, but it is your job to make it pretty. Here are some of the different shots that you can capture and the acronyms of each. Know these when you're shooting video so you know what shot is being asked for. The next step is the most time consuming and this is editing. Editing digital video involves four major tasks and they are capturing video from an external source, arranging separate video sequences and clips, splitting and trimming clips, and adding transitions and special effects. Also, you can add graphics and create the final video using editing software. In the past, you had to capture video and transfer video in real time from a tape. Now you can just transfer the file from the storage media via a USB or Thunderbolt connection. The transfer can include video and audio along with data such as scene detection, date stamp, and even geotags. The basics of video editing are the source video is used to create a final video. Source video is defined as the captured footage before it is, it is edited. This is done in the computer where you bring in the source video and arrange it on a timeline to create the master video. This is a series of instructions and pointers for performing operations on the original source footage. A computer is able to compile the master video using all of the source footage that you select. Editing software is composed of a preview window, library window, construction window, and a timeline. Each area is for a specific purpose and all digital video editing software has these windows. The preview window displays the source video and contains VCR-like controls that allow you to control the video and set your in and out points for the selection of the video into the library. The library window displays and stores clips that have been transferred to the editing software. Clips are then edited and combined on the construction window that is in turn represented as a timeline or storyboard. Timelines contain tracks to store different video clips and audio recording. It is called a storyboard because within the timeline, it will show you stills of your compiled clips in order. Basic video editing operations include splitting, where you div divide a clip into multiple parts, trimming, where you remove the unwanted frames, and transitions, where effects move in or out of a clip. Try not to get too crazy with transitions and stick to a crossfade or a dip to black. Transitions can include dissolves, wipes, and cuts. If you use too many crazy transitions, the video can start to look unprofessional and very cheesy. All right, so the final step that we will go over is rendering. Rendering is defined as the process of applying the editing operation specified by the master video to produce a new independent video file. In the past, this took forever, but new software and hardware advances have made this much quicker. Of course, it still requires time. Rendering requires a choice of codec and screen resolution. Depending on your delivery and resolution, choose the correct rendering codec and resolution. I predict that all of you will be rendering at a resolution of 1920 by 1080 or higher. Transcoders such as YouTube will transcode your media into the smaller formats needed to playback on multiple devices. Also, pay attention to the frame rate and the video data rate. You will learn more about this in your media journey, but for now, just familiarize yourself with the basics of rendering digital video. 
So, to finish up this module, please review the guidelines for using video and familiarize yourself with these. It will help you become a better videographer and keep these with you throughout your career. I know that I use these guidelines on a daily basis in my job. So, we learned the basics of digital video in this lecture. I have been in the field for many years and I still learn something new every day. My hope is that this lecture has provided you with the basics needed to start to understand how digital video is shot and delivered. We went over the methods to control digital video file sizes and digital video file formats, what screen resolution, frame rate, and compression is all about. And finally, we went over the steps for creating original digital video, choosing a camera, guidelines for shooting footage, editing, and rendering. I know it's a lot, but a great start for you. Go ahead and complete the module assignments, and I will see you next class. Thank you.